that the leadership of the Barbados State Authority needs to reassess the direction in which the political and administrative of this party is going. That is the view from the periphery that the leadership of the party has to reassess the direction in which they are taking this party. The view from the periphery tells me also that when you have varying issues of the day and what is happening in the conservative in Barbados, that the Barbados they were already given the acuteness of the problem that, that is causing excessive the protests in the Barbados, that the Barbados they were already had to be sending the of the Barbados. of concern to the people of Barbados, and when the statements are made, they are made in too much of a correct way, and there is too little consistency on what we need to do. The people of Barbados. They also tell me that the leadership needs to convene more press conferences, be seen more often, be heard more often. I depend on no one anything. 
and there is a view on the periphery that two incestuous relationships are being established and they take it to a group between certain elements of the unions of our leaders and the democratic democracy. <laughs> And the only person who are going to suffer as a result of these essential relationships are those that the union leaders lead. And the particular elements of the union leaders I'm talking about is the National Union of Public So let that message go out that those essential relationships need to be stopped and they need to get all the business of the people who are represented. That's right. You remember well, on the occasion of the last election shortly thereafter, when pressure was brought to bear, to bear on the Democratic Labour Party, they hastily went and they concluded a collective bargaining, bargaining agreement with the National Union of Public Workers. And it was just short on the slave in it, and they gave a 10% across the board in peace. I think it was 6% in the first year, 6% in the second year. And let me remind you that that agreement has come to an end almost a year ago. In excess of a year. It was 2008 to 2010. Right. So it is over a year that that collective bargaining agreement has come to an end. But may I also remind you that since that collective bargaining agreement was struck for the civil servants, that plenty has happened in order to erode and to devalue the wages and salaries of the civil And any one of you or all of you in here who are members of the union, you need to get up in the leadership of the government they probably need to help them to get up and put some pressure on their leadership in order to get that those discussions started and a sensible collective bargain made on behalf of you. I remember there was a part in 1965. Got up one morning, went to work, and performed her duties as a princess. No one knew what her task was, assigned by her divine force. Many people at that time recognized the social end of the society, but they were talking. They were not acting. But she said, I am going to confront the social ill today. And I'll not pass through when they answer to move out of a beat to give what was perceived as a right in that society for another white woman to write in that seat, she refused. That confrontation, that confrontation said to the world, this will happen no more. And I want to put that within the context of what has happened in Barbados 55 years after the on the sovereignty of Barbados. They are black women again. Said she would stand up to no chauvinism in this society. Some women in this society continue to talk in the world. I will not represent the interests of the agenda. We were striking a party in this society. Fundamental issues had to be tackled. Jersey stepped in and a number of villains and devops in the society <laughs> decided to go after her. <laughs> I want to have a I want to commend her for the position she took in demonstrating the fundamental attribute of courage that is very seldom seen in the bosom of that men and that women who stand at the lower side of the world. Thank you, sir. Literally, almost every day for the last month, I have had people either coming to me or phone calls. There are people who used to use Crest Store for cholesterol. Crest Store now is not even on the formula. There is no, there is no generic replacement 
for their story. And for people for whom their story works perfectly, and who are no others that you get on other terms, there are no words that I or you or even the Prime Minister can give them to comfort them other than the fact that they know how to spend the money to do these things. There are people who may have used other medication that is not on the form of medication. You know me well enough that I don't speak IV. Why so not here? The Barbados Drug Service, products available in MPC number 31, products available in MPC number 32, first of April 2011 to first of March 2012. And those products that are marked in pink and pink and yellow, the pink and yellow that is highlighted here, are the ones that are completely, the government has completely removed from the formulary. The little pines used for hypertension. Some of you may be familiar with it. I spoke about Prestor, and Prestor is particularly bad because I like Lipitor, for which there is a generic, although its efficacy and deficiency is not necessarily the same, and its side effects may also be different, at least there is more for Lipitor. But there is not more for Prestor. But I'm not going to dwell on this all day. I just want to try to Because you know what symbolizes the character and the short-sightedness of this government more than anything else? There's a product, and he mothers in here, and maybe some of the young fathers who are diligent in the area. Called Metamizol. Right. And Metamizol is simply a rousing drop. So you may all know what we're out to do. We're out to release pain. But the drops are used for young babies who can't communicate, so you can only assume. You can only hope that you are assuming that you know what is wrong with them and they start praying and praying and praying and praying. But you believe that this government has taken barraging drops off the formulary totally. Now, who is usually under more pressure to find money than a young mother? Whether it is in terms of diapers, whether it is in terms of other things for the child. Usually, they don't have jobs. In some instances, they are working for maintenance for the child. This party has a leader, and he is the leader. But this party needs a constitution and it must get one! Half of the time that we were on the front stage last year, we made the thing that should never happen had we had that new constitution we come to and say. And I'm saying to you now, it is fighting for nothing for me. I have it. I get it by virtue of being a member of Parliament. Will you do? You are the one who must be in the vanguard to change with me on this issue. You are the one. And I say that it is time that the membership of this party says those who are not prepared to trust the integrity, the honesty, and the judgment of the ordinary members of the party, the Labour Party, stand up and let it be. Stand up and let it be. Because it is not about finding out why he wants to bring this up, why he wants to bring this up, that's not the way he wants to bring this up. The question is why not? I am not going to go into another conference. A man like Tom Boyd, who was the member, and he tells me to say Michael North year after year after year on the National Council. And all because they don't want to, or you see, because they really didn't know who you were going to work. I only get close to him on the That's the truth. But because you see, you know how a man is going to go. You exit from being a delegate. And names that we have never seen. All of a sudden appear on a list to determine the future of this party. 
N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O N O and the truth is, William is there, he can tell you he was general secretary after me. And it is largely because young people are not prepared to just fall apart to the state of party anymore. And let us get the facts right. Because there are about 90,000 young people between the ages of 15 and 45. Last election, the Barbados the party got 77,000 votes. And it then got in something that was more. So there are more young people between the ages of 15 and 45 that are voting for either party in this country. And when I say to you, therefore, that how we speak to people, how we engage people, has to change, it is born of a recognition that they are not going to sit down and say, I voted for you only because I felt that you vote for you because that is the first X, Y, Z of the terms of our day of public. You get the odd one. Both parties have on it a listed membership of about 9, 10, 000. Both parties have a functional membership of less than 10, 10, and if we don't want to wake up and smell the coffee, we're going to do it to our parents. When you go around branch by branch by branch, how many of the same faces you see week after week after week? <coughs> I have some new faces in the air tonight and I try to get together. He's out here. A dead man. So that when I say to you that we have to reposition how we do business, it is because of that. I'm not born out of any antagonism towards anybody. But I want to grow every day. And I know that both parties are fighting hard to remain relevant. That is why we call it programs of a greater fellowship, listenership, from Parliament itself. There was a time 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago when people came to Parliament and it was the center of attention. Now it is peripheral to what goes on in this country. 